Do you cringe when you look in the mirror, Supermom? You see all the lumps and bumps and stretch marks and you wonder, how the heck did my body look like this? And maybe it even brings up some feeling of shame or insecurity. Well, on today's Super Moms Guide 2, we are going to talk about rocking and loving your mom bod. Because it is a beautiful, beautiful masterpiece that has, hello, grown humans. If that's not amazing, I don't know what is. But it is one of the common things that I hear from all of my moms about, you know, you might want to change a little something here or lose a few pounds there. And it's not about the external. Today we're talking about the mindset piece of it and loving your body just the way that it is. So super tip number one is to let go of unrealistic expectations. We are bombarded by the supermodel mom who popped out a baby and went right back to her pre-pregnancy weight like two weeks later. It doesn't really happen. There might be those aliens that it does, but for the rest of us, it takes patience and it takes time. We grew humans inside of our body. It is okay for you not to go back to the way you looked when you were 16. And when you feel like you should, I hate shoulds, um, that's where you have those room for insecurities. You don't have to look a certain way to love your body. I don't care if you're 20 pounds or 50 pounds or 100 pounds heavier than maybe you'd like to be, you can love yourself just the way you are by appreciating how much your body has done for you and how much it continues to do for you. Because the more you love yourself, the more likely you're going to take the positive changes that you need to make in order to maybe make some improvements. Now this is not to say that you, know, you can't lose the extra pounds that you'd like for your health, but why are you doing it? Are you doing it for your health or are you doing it for your vanity? And it's okay to do it for your vanity, but love yourself each step of the way. Super tip number two is to get into the habit of finding the positives. So when you look in the mirror, what thoughts are going through your head? Are you thinking, ooh, my butt doesn't look so good? Oh, you're sucking in your belly, wishing that it was a little bit flatter? Are you looking at, you know, maybe the blemishes on your skin? Well, no wonder you don't feel good about yourself. All you're doing is focusing on the negative. If you can flip that around and start to see what you do love about yourself in the mirror. You may not love your belly because it's not flat, but you know what? my boobs look awesome today. Or, you know, maybe you're not super happy about the shape of your legs, but dang, do they look good tan after that vacation we took to the beach. Find the positives. And the more you can retrain your brain to focus on those, you'll be less likely to let the negative pieces hold you back when it comes to doing what you want to do. A super tip number three is to relax. Give yourself a break, okay? No one is perfect. Not, again, not even the supermodels in the magazines. They've been airbrushed. They've been, you know, painted and plastered and makeup. They don't even look like that. So just relax. It's not all about how you look. Appreciate your body for all of the magical things it does and allow it to really serve you in your life. Now, before we jump in and talk to our super special guest, Ray Anna, I wanted to let you know about a little change to the Super Mom's Guide too. Now, for now, we're going to keep them on the Searching for Superpower Facebook page, as well as you can find them on uh, the YouTube page under Searching for Superpower. However, to make this a little bit easier and to make sure that you don't ever miss an episode, you can sign up with the link above below. I never remember where they end up. Um, so that you will get the Super Mom's Guide to every Tuesday straight to your inbox because that's one less thing you have to remember and it just makes it super, super simple for you to never miss a tip 
or an opportunity for a special freebie or a deal that I've got out or just to meet some really cool people. So go ahead and make sure you sign up so that you never miss an episode. Now, we're gonna jump in and talk to Ray Anna. She is a mom of two, she is also a nutritionist, and she's gonna share a few of her tips about how she helps her clients love their bodies. All right, welcome, welcome, Brianna. We are super excited to have you on the Supermom's Guide to today. Today we're talking about loving your body. And I'm sure as a, a nutritionist and a certified health professional, you deal with that a lot in your probably professional and maybe even personal life too. Um, so could you just real quick kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm very excited to be on. Um, yes, I'm, I'm a nutritionist. I have a bachelor's of science degree in nutrition, and then I also have some certifications from the American Council on Exercise okay. and Health Training. I also teach group fitness classes. Um, and what I do is I work with women one-on-one -on, -one mm -hmm. on developing a healthy lifestyle. Okay. And that it definitely encompasses things like weight loss and eating well and exercising, all of those things. Um, but really the most vital and critical part of what I do with my clients is focusing on that healthy mindset yeah. because out that mindset, really everything else falls to the wayside. Mm -hmm. And I, I absolutely love what I do because the, the nutrition and the sciency part of it stimulates me up here in my mind, yep. but it's working with women and getting them from where they are to where they want to go. That fulfills me on the inside. Oh, that's, a, that's amazing. That's a cool story. So how did you get started doing that? Obviously, you, know, you went to school and everything for it, but how did you decide once you kind of gotten your certifications that coaching was the way that you really wanted to go? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, my my story isn't a very linear one, which I think is the case for a they lot. They never are. <laughs> yeah, it started off linear as far as you're right. That's what I went to school mm -hmm. for. But then as soon as I graduated, I didn't find work in my field right away. So I did the responsible thing and, and got a job that I liked enough that paid the bills. And I, and I got married and I stuck with that job for a while. And um, I actually, I have two sons. My 10 year old's actually my stepson, but he lives okay. with my husband full time. And then my youngest is three. Okay. And um, as soon as I had my three year old, I went from having this mindset of, you know, things are pretty comfortable. Things are good at this job. Bills are paid. I, I have a decent future here. Yep. To, I want to be home. I don't want to be working <laughs> nine to five anymore. So I, um, I vowed that I would never return mm -hmm. from a maternity leave ever again. That's it, powerful. Right? I, I do. I want to have more kids in the future. And so it took me through this like up and down and topsy-turvy trail of um, finding ways to be home. Like I know so many moms go through, what can I do to make the money and still be with my family the way I want to? I ran an in-home daycare for a year and a half, which, which <laughs> was a been an adventure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Yes, it was. And I was blessed with wonderful families, but I realized that that wasn't my calling. Mm -hmm. And even though on paper, it was checking off everything I needed as far as money and being available to my family and things like that. I was actually at my lowest point mm. on the inside. Mm -hmm. I, and, and that's really where um, my mindset truly affected. It was beginning to affect my physical health. My emotional health was definitely, you know, way out the window. window. I went through that one too. <laughs> and it was just, and it took me to hitting my rock bottom as far as I was actually experiencing like panic attacks and I actually went on antidepressants for the yep. first time in my life and what is wrong with me and it, it took some real soul searching and connecting with people that were really invested in me and my well-being to kind of pull me out of this funk absolutely I closed down my daycare through no fault of the kids that I was watching, but just for me and, and my mental health. <laughs> and I actually, you know, in, in my later 20s, ended up taking these $10 an hour jobs just to get out of the house. And even though it was the opposite of what I wanted to do, 
I had to kind of separate myself from my environment to yeah. to truly discover what I was meant to do. To shake and, things up. That's exactly with the, um, I have a power class. It's a, it's a coaching program where that rock bottom that you hit is exactly where the like the women that come to me are. And you're like, I don't know what to do. I know it's not right, but what do I do? And you were so lucky to have that support in that moment. Yeah, so it's it's the support and the relationships that, that are key to breaking you out of any sort of cycle. Absolutely. In life. Um, and, and that's what led me to, to becoming a coach. I, I had my, um, my, bachelor's in nutrition, but what, what could I do with it? And then I came upon health coaching, mm -hmm. the American Council on Exercise, and then I got my certification to teach group fitness, which had always been a passion of mine. And then all of a sudden, everything came together. Yeah. I was fulfilled on the inside. I, I'm serving my family and being with them the way I want to be. And it's just but it, it all started with changing my mindset. Yes, absolutely. Out of that low place. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's what I want every woman to experience because it's there. It's there for you. That's great. So how do you, obviously, like they're super connected, but walk us through sort of the process for um, how you help the women sort of love their bodies and how that isn't just a number on a scale. I think you... Um, uh, to quote one of our messages we had spoke, you were like, it's more than just a dress size. You know, it, it's really about the whole package here. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we're blessed to live in an age where there's no shortage on information out there. And most of us know what we should do. Mm -hmm. And we know we need to eat this and not that. We know we need to exercise. So we find ourselves, you know, purchasing and buying into products or regimens. And there's a lot of really good stuff out there. Sure. But if we're missing the key component, the glue that holds that all together, you know, no, no diet is going to get you to love your body. No exercise regimen is going to make you feel like the ideal version of yourself if you sure. don't truly appreciate what's on the inside. So with my clients, that, that, that's where we start. And especially for mothers, we really take some time to think about, just pause and think about truly the amazing thing that your body has done. Right. You have made a person, you know, you have sustained another life. And that's incredible. And the fact that our bodies can change and do that. You know, we, we live in this culture where, you know, you, you pop the baby out and, and you're supposed to be, you know, back in a size two. Supermodel the next day, right? <laughs> it's like, wait, I wasn't even a size two before. How am I supposed to do this? Mm -hmm. um, and so that really is starting there with appreciating your body and, and loving it for what it can do. You know, you might not be completely happy with what you look like in the mirror, mm -hmm. but your body is able to go out on that walk. Your body got you through the exercise class. You might have been tired and you might have been not comfortable and you might have been hating some of the moments, but look, your body got you through the class. And we stop and reflect on those moments to really appreciate that. And once you start focusing on the positives and what you can appreciate and what you can do, it's just a domino effect from there. Absolutely. That is so, so true. I know even um, for myself, it, it's like, it, I think as women, especially like, and I think just humans in general, like there's always something you want to improve upon or change or that, but really just being grateful for what your body has done for you. And it totally starts with that mindset. I think for me personally, I, I'm I'm still a baby. I'm like 29 years old, but I'm hitting that like dirty 30, you know, coming up soon. And it's really just, I'm, I'm a mom of two kids. Like I'm not 16 anymore. And, and realizing that, Hey, my body, like, this is my grown up body, you know, <laughs> it's not supposed to look like my teenage body and it's done all these things. So I can really appreciate all the lumps and bumps and scars that might be on there and see them as beautiful and like they're my piece of art they're not something that we should hide or be ashamed of exactly exactly and, and I really liked how you um you 
said, you know, that there's nothing wrong with, you know, wanting to improve because that that's kind of, it's a really blurry line because yes, we want to love our bodies and appreciate for what they've given us. But then also, yes, you always want to continue to work better. I just want to make sure that we're not getting bogged down with the negative negativity because yeah. we tend to do that as women. And you just mm -hmm. feel so overwhelmed with this negativity that you don't have the strength to push forward and try for more. Yeah, that's so good. But we just need, need to keep progressing and not strive for perfection because that doesn't exist, but just continue to do things that make you feel good mm -hmm. and get you to that healthy place where you're, you're happy. You truly love your life and love your body. And, and, and that's what it's about. So it's, it's about finding that balance of striving and appreciating. Yep. So what are maybe a tip or two just like that our, our audience can take away to maybe, um, you know, help them feel a little bit better and help them love their body like right now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's all about being aware of that self-talk. Mm -hmm. Be aware of the thoughts that go through your head, especially when we're experiencing the different moods yeah. throughout the day. Um, something I'm very aware of myself is, Throughout the day, generally I'm pretty good at curbing excess sugar. I, okay. I discipline myself pretty well when it comes to that. But if I'm stressed or I'm feeling cranky or I'm tired, mm -hmm. or especially if there's something I want to avoid, I find myself digging in the snack cabinet and thinking, I'm just going to eat a cookie. Uh -huh. I have nothing against cookies. They are wonderful. And I definitely share and enjoy my Everything cookies. in moderation, right? Everything in moderation. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm not a, an extremist, cut this out, cut that out type nutritionist. Mm -hmm. But I had to be aware of how are you feeling right now and what are you doing? And I had that repeat behavior of I'm not feeling good. I'm getting in the cookie cabinet. Yeah. And it's just being aware of that self-talk and realizing, okay, why am I doing this right now? Mm -hmm. Is there a better way of coping with it? Just that self-awareness is, is really powerful and rewording those messages that we give ourselves all day long. That's so good. I think it just, it gets to the root of the problem and not just the surface level thing, which like you said, there's information everywhere, you know, how to, to make your, you know, your butt look better or to lose a couple pounds or something. But like, this is the core stuff that even as your weight fluctuates and your body changes, you can take with you long term. Absolutely. So that's awesome. So if anyone's interested in maybe connecting with you or, um, you know, talking a little bit more about coaching, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, an easy way is my website. It's www.rjcertifiedhealth.com. Awesome. Um, yeah, you can also find me on Facebook, Rayanna Johnson, um, and, and I'm happy to connect anyway. Wonderful. So one more question I like to ask all of my guests before we let you go here. What is your superpower? Oh my goodness. What <laughs> is my superpower? Honestly, it's, it's encouraging others. That's I, amazing. That's I, a great one. I love, I love just telling and reminding people of how amazing they are. Mm -hmm. That's such a great superpower to have. We need more of those. We need more of you in the yeah. world. <laughs> more of you too. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on here. I really appreciate it. And I think that just your message and those little like tidbits that you shared are going to be so, so helpful for so many women. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Her superpower is encouragement. How amazing is that? If that's something that you need help with, please go check out Rayanna's stuff. We'll put the link so you can find her easily and really just learn to love your now, body. Now, just to recap what we talked about today on the Super Mom's Guide to Loving Your Mom Bod, we learned to let go of unrealistic expectations. We also learned how to get into the habit of finding the positive instead of the negative when we're looking at our bodies. And then finally, third, we need to relax and give ourselves a little leeway. We don't have to be perfect because no one's perfect. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Again, please make sure you subscribe, 
Um, so you can get these episodes in your email inbox every Tuesday. Click the little love button, share it out across your social media with your friends because the more that us moms connect and empower one another, we really encourage a new super mom movement where you don't have to be perfect. The sky is the limit and we are our own best assets. I love you all super ladies. Have a great week and I'll see you next Tuesday.